Hello, Grady Virtual Learners! Welcome back to another episode of English Aid Live Streaming Lesson. We are glad to be with you again in virtual. How is everyone doing? We hope that everyone is fine and doing well. We are now on the third lesson of fourth quarter, and we, as your live streaming teachers, are really overjoyed and grateful as you have always bestowed your active participation from day one up until today. Wayne Johnson once said that success is not always about greatness. It is about consistency. Consistent hard work leads to success. Greatness will come. We want you to imbue this in your heart because our collective hard work can always be result in success and victory in the future. Also, don't forget what we have always said. Let's Let help and support one another with the hashtag no matter what the situation is, education must continue. We are delighted to see the comments section being bombarded with comments from different schools. That means you are ready to get going today. Then what are you waiting for? Buckle up! Get yourself learning module, pen and paper, and journey with us as we explore the magical world of English language. Keep tuning in and we will assure you that you will enjoy and learn in today's discussion. To begin with, may I ask Sir Jason about the learning target of this topic. This session will be revolving around uh, this most essential learning competency. Expand the content of an outline using notes for, for primary sources and secondary sources. Thank you, Sir Jason, for today's discussion. We will use the strategic, localized, and interactive instructional material about expanding the content of an outline using notes for primary and secondary sources, written by Sir Marlon F. Albunian from my son, National High School. Of course, let us, let us not forget our learning principles, for these have a huge help in our learning process. Listen, know, and learn. Listen attentively and pay attention throughout the discussion. Note, note the important details. At the same time, you may take note of your questions during the discussion and you will be given enough time to type it in the comment section for the Q&A part. Lastly, learn. Learn something new and together we we'll learn as one. Always remember, listen, note, and, and learn. learn. I am pretty sure everyone is ready for the new topic. Now, before we begin, let us have an activity to check how much prior knowledge you have still stored in. In this activity, determine whether the following is a primary source or a secondary source. Type your answer in the comment section. We will give you 10 seconds to answer. Let us check your answers. These are the answers. How many of you got the perfect score? May we see your scores? Kindly comment it below. Just a wow! Obvious that you have a background knowledge regarding our lesson. To fully obtain learning, let us go over with two primary and secondary sources. Primary source provides direct or first-hand evidence about an event. Object, person, work of art. Primary sources provide the original materials on which other research is based and enable students and other researchers to get as close as possible to what happened during event or time period. 
Some examples of these are journals, audio, and video recordings, speeches, and diaries. These are considered as original documents based on author's own account and experienced an actual event of time. Another example of this is a newspaper report by a reporter. In this kind, the reporter or writer of a news personally experienced or perhaps witnessed the event. That is why it is viewed primary source. There are also examples of primary source in which the information is non-written and non-verbal, like pictures and artifacts. This is commonly used in a scientific research wherein primary sources present original thinking, report on discoveries, or share new information. How can we tell if the source is primary source? We can tell it by just asking ourselves, was the source created by someone directly involved in the events you're studying? Was the source created by someone directly involved in the events you're studying? Does the source provide original information? Are you directly analyzing the source itself? Let us remember that a primary source is a raw evidence that has not yet been interpreted. After the primary source, we have the secondary source of information. It is any image or description of an event or place that has been made some time after the events usually by someone who was not there. It is one that is created later by someone who did not experience firsthand or participate in the events. Some examples of these are textbooks, dictionaries and encyclopedias, newspaper editorial, and journal articles that comment or analyze. To further understand, let us have the examples. First is, History textbooks, stories, or accounts of the past, written by someone who was not there. For example, encyclopedias, historical articles, and interpretations. Next, we have the pieces of art, literature, music, or dance, created later to represent life in that time. Last, recordings or recreations of the past events, like artifact reproductions, based on theories about the past and many more. Now, let us have the questions to ask when determining if something is a secondary source. First is, did the author consult multiple sources to create this work? Next, is this information an interpretation or paraphrasing of another author's work? Did the information come from secondhand reporting or is to source a textbook, review, or commentary. Last, does the source include quotations or images? Now, let's have why do we use secondary sources? Secondary sources are best for uncovering background or historical information about a topic and broadening your understanding of a topic by exposing you to others' perspectives interpretations, and conclusions. However, it is better to predict an original information source or the primary source if you plan to reference it in your work. Now to sum it up, in writing researches or essays, we often use both primary and secondary sources. They complement each other to help you build a convincing argument or narrative. And when writing an essay, report, or a speech, making an outline can help you break down the main idea and the supporting ideas. It helps you organize your thoughts coherently. Lastly, you will be able to locate information in various sources, interpret tables, maps, diagrams, and graphs, or important skills. And now to know how will you understand the lesson, we want to challenge you. Type P if the source is a primary source or S if it is a secondary source. You will be given 5 seconds to answer each item.
If you got a perfect score, congratulations! You are one step ahead to becoming a proficient English language learner. Though some of you were not able to get a high score, we are delighted that you are doing your best. Anyway, there is still a room for improvement and that's the reason why you are here. The time has finally come to tell us what your mind desires to know. Sounds poetic, isn't it? Well, just key in your questions in the comment section. Let the time start now. I and Sir Jason are now very fired up to answer all the queries gathered by our moderator because asking questions show your eagerness to learn. That is right, ma'am. Why don't we start by answering the first question? Why is that these two sources important in our study? Thank you for asking this a very sensible one. It is important to know this because this will make us learn how to evaluate information that text have. Primary and secondary sources will be helped to us to identify accuracy, bias, and usefulness. Now let's proceed to the second question. When do we use primary and secondary sources? Thank you for that keen question. We use primary sources of information first is when you want to make claims or criticisms. Next, as evidence for theories. And lastly, to gain timely perspectives on a topic. While in secondary sources, if you want an extensive and in-depth analysis of primary sources. Also, when you want to summarize, evaluate, and analytically interpret primary material by offering a personal perspective. Now, unlike primary sources, secondary sources are not evidences, but are useful sources of different experts' views of primary sources. Lastly, is when you want to locate additional information for your research. Aside from the two sources of information that you have discussed, is there any kind of source of information that we can use? That is a good question. Actually, we have the third type or kind of source of information, and that is the tertiary source of information. These are sources that index, abstract, organize, compile, or digest other sources. Some reference materials and textbooks are considered tertiary sources when their chief purpose is to list summarize or simply repackage ideas or other information. Tertiary sources are usually not credited to a particular author. I think that suffices for today. Let some of your questions be answered in your follow-up discussion. If you still have questions in mind, please don't hesitate to ask because we are glad to help you. If there is something that's troubling you in answering, we are pleased if you will seek for assistance. We want to instill in your mind that we, teachers, or even your family members are here to guide you. Aside from that, we also want you to aim for the better even amidst a problematic situation. Who knows when this pandemic will end? But with faith, everything will go back to normal. So hang there. With that, 
let us all meet again on another session of English 8 live streaming lesson. That would be all for today. Goodbye, stay safe, and God bless.